Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 351 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day, is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, and it is going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. Uh, we might get some snow or some rain tomorrow, but today it looks like it will be very nice. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big apology for uh, the late start this morning. We are having some weird technical issues in that there was a very uh, high-pitched frequency coming from one of uh, Mr. Grizzly's mics uh, that would have made the show unbearable for anyone to listen to. Uh, so we've done our best to try and find a temporary solution because we weren't actually able to fix the problem at source. Um, so we've uh, switched mics and mic channels and everything completely. So hopefully uh, it'll work today. And now it looks like Mr. Grizzly's mic stand needs a little Viagra. Uh, so <laughs> because it keeps, <laughs> you're having a day. Yeah. You're having a day. Yep. 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 Yeah. I hear you. Yep, that will be probably be the answer to how's your mental health doing today. I'm having a day. Um, having a day. Big, big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. And I don't know what's going on, but my cheekbones are fierce today. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> before we do anything else, let's, uh, well, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing at the moment? My friend, I'm so sorry. At the moment, not good. I, I, I honestly cannot, for the life of me, figure out what in the hell was going on. I don't know what happened. I changed mic cables. I changed channels. I changed microphones. I don't know what's going on. And I don't have time to figure it out before we're start to, you know, about to start a show. So it's like, well, I'll just roll with this for now, and we'll figure it out later. Yep, indeed. Oh, geez. Uh, come on, some of the kids were wondering if Lola may have chewed on a cable, but no, no, she can't even get to them. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, I probably knew that was the answer because, I mean, this is what you do for a living, man. You know how to hide those things. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, Miss Shadika, I'm so sad to hear that you're having a day too. Uh, good morning to all the kids who have joined us because uh, I also saw in the pre-chat that uh, Mr. Bieber hasn't done a romper room in a while. So uh, hello, Miss Shadika. Hello, Mr. Miss Tavi G. Hello, Kit Ellen. Hello, Kit Jen. Lovely to see you. Hello, Kit Toronto Dan, my friend. Hello, Kit Tim. Nice to see you. Hello, Kit PNC Bio. And people are really appreciating your mixes. If uh, people want to hear some uh, good EDM, a whole bunch of different kinds, uh, check out uh, the web, uh, web YouTube webpage of PNC Bio, P App and Sand C Bio. Uh, there's some uh, good tunes there. Uh, our, our kits are very, very talented. Uh, mm. Hello, Kit Carol. Lovely to see you today. Uh, or is it Carol or Carol? I'm not sure. 
I, I'm French, so I, I, pro- I pronounce I pronounce Carol different ways than most people do. Um, good morning. Who else do we have today? Kit Cassie. Hello, my friend. Lovely to see you this morning. Kit Mike H. That's great. And things are moving now as more chat is coming in. Uh, Kit Mr. Cal. Kit J. Crick. Lovely to see you this morning. Still Tom Romper Rooming. Kit Sean. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, of course, when I say hello to um, Kit, uh, Miss Shattuck, of course, I'm saying hello to Kit Mohan and to Mateo and Jazzy and Rain. I hope everything's going well with the family. And uh, if I have met Kit Linda M, there we go. Good morning to you. If I've missed you, I am so sorry uh, because right now the the chat is coming in fast and furious and things are jumping up and down on my screen, which makes it hard to follow. So uh, if I've missed you, I'm sorry, but I am so glad that you have joined us today. Um, there's been lots of things in the news. First of all, uh, if you did not listen to our show yesterday, uh, welcome back. We hope that you had a lovely Easter long weekend for those of you who were observing. And I uh, hope that you didn't have your celebrations marred too much by the conservative faction that decided that Easter should be treated like Christmas and Remembrance Day now. Apparently, the conservative thing is to suggest that we are um, persecuting Christians because, uh, remember, it all started with the war on Christmas, that we're not allowed to say Christmas anymore, even though nobody actually banned it. We just recognize that we live in a pluralist country, and a lot of people of a lot of different faiths and people of no faiths are observing or not observing around the same period of time. And rather than wanting to write you know, a 75 word greeting, Merry Christmas to all the Christians, Merry Ramadan to this, Merry this to that, Merry that to that, right. and things, just happy holidays to everyone. <laughs> a lot uh, of holidays in the month of April and March, yes. March and April, actually a lot of holidays. So yeah. You know. So people lose their minds around Christmas and then around Remembrance Day because our military is non-denominational, only like unit cohesion. So we decided that we were not going to say denominational prayers. I remember saying that people kind of around says, oh, they banned prayer. And of course, they didn't ban prayer because there were prayers plenty, just not to one specific sky daddy or sky mummy or deity or whatever. And now it seems that they thought that that worked for them so well at Christmas Net Remembrance Day that they tried it again for Easter. Yeah. Because, you know, there's no fewer than four different major faiths around the world celebrating major things around this time. We just celebrated Purim, and we talked about Pierre Polyev making a very dim, unenthusiastic Happy Holly uh, video in which he changed the name of the holiday four different times. Uh, holy, holly, 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 holly. Yeah, uh, and, and you will note that he did a similar video for Easter, and he was way more enthusiastic and got it right there. Um, so just... Uh, but, you know, his uh, Holly video was much more like his Christmas eggnog video where, uh, you know, it was like, I like to celebrate the joy of the holiday season. It's like, yeah, well, could you show us a little joy when you say that maybe? I don't know. Well, um, a lot there, I think. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I don't, this is probably people are going to think I'm a little blasphemous for saying this, but, you know, he seems to be uh, really excited by things that rise. He must really get a kick out of leavened bread. It is risen. So, so last, and it's, last year, the year before, when he had a a picture from inside a tomb where the the stone was rolled away, and they had the three crucifixes in the background, and he posted this in the paper. He is risen. Last year, the year before, I can't remember when he did it. Yeah, with his big face yeah. on it. Yeah, it, my mother, who is like super Catholic. Yes. I showed her that and she's like, what? I said, exactly. She's like, no, that is wrong on so many levels. Mm-hmm. So many levels. But putting your face, Pierre Polyev, conservative, with, she's like, that is wrong on so many levels. Yep. Religion so this, has no place in politics in this land, period. Yep. Yep. So period. this year he had, yep, he had a video and the video at the end had his like Pierre for PM logo on it. And it's like, yeah. not sure. Jesus would be all that cool with branding the resurrection as being a conservative, but hey, you know, you do you, buddy. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty bad look all around. So uh, yep, they thought that this was a big thing. So there was a lot of, if you were online at all, there was a lot of squealing about, you know, I was like, oh my God, how could they call it the March holiday week? And blah, blah, blah. It's Easter, it's Easter. And of course, then they lost their minds doubly because um, 
well, yes. Standard Day of Visibility, which, by the way, has been on March 31st since 2009 when it was officially declared. So that had nothing to do with Biden or Trudeau. Yes, because see, he, here's the thing that that's a fixed date. March 31st is a fixed date for transgender uh, visibility. Period. Fixed date. Easter, unlike Christmas or Halloween, is not a fixed date. It follows. What does it follow now? What does it follow? During the vernal or the the, the vernal equinox, after the first full moon, uh, a week later is when Easter falls. Yep. Now, isn't that and rather pagan? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really, it's a pagan calendar is what it is. And I'm not mm -hmm. trying to offend anybody. This is a simple fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a situation where basically, well, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Easter, it's Easter roulette every year. But, well, yes. What day is Easter going to fall? Yes. And apparently, it every the, single year. Yes, and apparently the conservative mantra is that well, since because it fell on the thirty first, any other holiday or observance that happened on March thirty first this year was chosen specifically. Yes, to piss off to compete course. with Easter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, the next time I think this happens is in 2062. <laughs> yeah. So, but here's the thing is that March 21st is also anesthesia tech day. And you didn't see any conservatives online getting pissed off at anesthetists and anesthesiologists. It was also, um, well, not in Canada, probably, but Cesar Chavez day. It was dance marathon day. It was Eiffel tower day. It was International Hug a Medievalist Day. See, there, actually, it was think, International Bunsen Burner Day. Yes, that's the other one I was going to say. National, it was National Crayon Day. National Farm Nobody Workers get upset Day, about National any Prom of those Day, days. National She's Funny That Way Day. National Tater Day. World Backup Day. So if you backed up your phone on uh, March 31st, you're a bad Christian. Or you're insulted so, the baby Jesus. Literally all of these things happened on the 31st of March. All But of they them. only got upset because trans. Yeah. Because and, they're, trans. and they're sitting there going, those trans people picked March 31st this year to do their turnout just to piss us off. No, they didn't. Oh, this is a this is funny from Alan. 420 will be lit. <laughs> Well, that's the you. You're scooping me right now. <laughs> well, she, it's on the screen. Ellen wrote this. Yeah, four twenty yes. will be lit. Well, that's exactly it. Because if you uh, look at your uh, calendars, oh, next year it's on four twenty. For next year, yes, Easter will be on April twentieth. So everything that you saw happen this year, expect it on steroids next year because next year the potheads will have all conspired. Yes, yes. To have scheduled 420 to compete with the baby Jesus. Mark your calendars, friends, because people will be losing their shit next year about that. You got to remember, too, 420 is not actually a recognized holiday on any calendar anywhere on earth as National Cannabis Day. It's not a thing. It never has been a thing. Officially recognized, officially recognized right? It was just... This thing started with a bunch of high school kids who at 4.20 p.m. they would meet at a statue post-detention to get high. So people started saying 4.20. April 20th started becoming this big day of, I don't know, cannabis awareness, if you will, when they used to have big smoke-ins on the hill. And I remember the last year they had it before it went legal. I was working on Parliament Hill. And I walked out of West Block and I was, you know, there's there's a huge crowd. It was the last year before it was legal. It, it will actually, it le was legalized that year. So in October, it became legal. So this is the last year of it. And I'm walking by, I'm walking across the hill to get home. And sure enough, uh, there's a few parliamentary uh, protective services officers along with a bunch of RCMP officers. And I looked at them and I said, so let me see if I understand this correctly. He goes, what's that? And I go, there's thousands of people here getting high on an illegal product, correct? And like, yeah. Are you going to arrest anybody? No. Nobody's getting arrested. So they're, they're smoking an illegal product 
on Parliament Hill mm-hmm. on the state. Nobody's getting arrested. No, we're not going to arrest anybody. Nobody's getting charged. Nobody's getting a ticket. Nobody's getting a fine. Nothing. We're just here to keep the peace. I'm like, okay. What happened if I pulled this beer out of my backpack and opened it right here, right now? He goes, yeah, I would give you a ticket. And I'm like, so this legal controlled substance that I have in my hand mm-hmm. will get me a fine, but that illegal substance won't? He's like, yeah. I go, do you not see some hypocrisy here? He's like, yeah, don't open the beer though. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to. But the ridiculous, and it's just, I'm like, this is absurd. And of course, yeah. what did our what did our city fathers do recently? City council voted against uh, beer and wine in public parks in the city of Ottawa this summer. Like, no, we can't have that. I'm like, but the, the guy sitting next to me, there's four of them with a giant water bong getting high as fuck. And I'm getting exposed to secondhand smoke, which I'm allergic to. But there's no secondhand beer. I'm not going to spill it on you. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to spit it on you. But I can't have a beer or a glass of wine. But they can. You not see the ridiculousness of it all? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, indeed. So, so it will be interesting next year when when Easter falls on four twenty. How are how yep. how are they going to lose their minds next year? Will Let's, they lose their minds next mark, year? That's mark a good the question. calendar. Mark the calendar. They will. Mark so. Just uh, if you have anybody like that in your family, given that it's Easter, it'd be a good time for some chocolate edibles. Do they make chocolate edibles? I have no idea. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are chocolate edibles. Yeah. The Easter Bunny brought you a little something special this year. You need to freaking calm down. <laughs> I'm, Amen. I am not advising you to drug people Amen. without their knowledge, by the way. Just, we would never recommend that on this show. No, 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 no. Hey, man, you, you could use some lewds. Hang on, something's going on crazy. All right. Um, now, uh, in case you're wondering, uh, well, hopefully they're today, because it's April 2nd, it's International Children's Books Day and International Fact-Checking Day, so uh, let's hope that uh, the conservatives don't lose their minds about that or think that the baby Jesus is crying for some other reason because we know that they have problems with certain children's books like Heather has two mommies and they're not particularly fond of fact checking. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> oh, and it's actual National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day too. Oh. Jelly or Nas- time? Jelly. Jelly. National Fair peanut Day, National Love Jelly Time, Peanut Butter Jelly, butter jelly time. time, National Love peanut Your jelly. Produce, Peanut Butter Jelly. Sorry. <laughs> National Love Your Pro- Your Produce Manager Day. Okay. I didn't know there was a National Love Your Produce Manager Day, but hey, Produce Manager, good job. Yeah, first. Way to keep the remember. celery stocked. Ah. <laughs> Uh, oh my god that's the the daddest dad joke i've ever heard Uh, when is when is naked bike ride day that's in july or (laughs) there's no pants day just ride the subway with no pants that's a new york city thing yes new york city ride the subway with no pants people go oh my god no pants yeah they're called shorts (sighs) settle down oh man (sighs) totally dad zone yep that's exactly what that was I kill me. Okay. Um, speaking of International Children's Book Day, <laughs> a divorce dad joke. Yeah, really. It's not even dead. It's not just a dad joke. It's a divorce dad joke. Yes. Oh, oh my God. Gee. Um, so speaking about International Children's Book Day, uh, it seems that something else happened yesterday. <clears throat> well, actually, something's been happening for the past few days, and it seems. Um, on April 16th, we will have the federal budget come down. And we mentioned yesterday, we talked about main estimates and supplementary estimates. And the main estimates are already be talked about by a committee. And the supplementary estimates will come. And the supplementary estimates are usually the things that are new in this year's budget. And um, normally what happens is that um, a budget is announced and you know, 
all the journalists are in lockup until the yes. time that uh, the news is embargoed, uh, gets lifted, and then they all go out. And you know, you have the budget reading speech and Old hands gets and thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it gets a lot of coverage that one day, and then it kind of disappears. Yes. And if there's something that happens, you don't hear the budget anymore. Uh, and the budget has a lot of stuff, right? So one day to try to get uh, attention to all that doesn't work. So it seems that the liberals are, um, well, they've basically joined the, uh, the campaign. If the campaign has started now, because PP has decided it has, and it seems that the liberals are willing to are saying, "Well, fine, let's campaign." So uh, instead of waiting until the sixteenth to find out what's in the budget, the liberals over the last few days have been um, doing the pre-budget tour, highlighting an element of the supplementary uh, measures of the upcoming budget and highlighting it before the budget release, which is causing certain people, traditionalists, to go all apoplectic because they're saying, mm. I remember the time when if anybody leaked something from the budget, it was criminal, blah, blah, blah. Like, now the government's leaking their own budget. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, the conservatives are crying because the liberals found a way to make a budget more than a one-day story. Oh, my goodness. And it actually found a way to make people pay attention to all the individual new measures there are and by announcing one of them a day, pretty much as so it seems, until the actual budget. So they've announced some measures for renters. They've announced some measures to expand uh, $10 a day uh, daycare. Uh, and yesterday, as we had hoped they would, they announced that they were going to uh, earmark $1 billion over five years for a national food program that would bring food to 400,000 Canadian children per year. Right now, there is a patchwork of food programs in various provinces and territories, yes. but they're usually funded by provinces, uh, charities, community groups, that type of stuff. And that covers about 21% of Canadian children. So this program here, this money is intended to fill in the gaps and to make the program truly national. Now you're going to have some conservatives that are going to lose their mind. I can't believe we're paying to feed your, kid, pay your, feed your kids. I can't believe we're paying to raise your kids because they say the same thing with child care. And I'm saying, hey, I don't care. It's like, Oops. I don't have any kids whatsoever. I've been paying education tax ever since I could remember. And you know what? I have no problem with it. And I have no problem with it for two reasons. One, I'd rather the kids be in school than hanging out on some street corner. Yes. Trying to figure out how to enter a home or vandalize a car or something of that sort because idle hands are the devil's workshop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And number two, I'm going to be old someday. And the yes. way our retirement system works is that we pay it forward. Exactly. It's not rocket science. I'm paying for the previous generation. The next generation is going to pay for me. And you know what? Well, I've lived in Canada all my life. So you know what? I'm a little soft. Well, what I like my comforts. What Carol's saying here. So I don't need daycare, the food prog program, or the renter program. Still going to vote for him. The country is bigger than me. And that's exactly what it is. Yep. Vote for something bigger than yourself. We say this often on the show. So um, this program is going to help to feed kids. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, gee, I'm already spending all this money. And all these people that are sitting like this, I can't believe we have to pay to raise your kids. You've always had to pay to raise the kids. Always. What do you think a baby bonus is? Public education. Baby <sighs> bonus. National Child Benefit, National Child Care Program, Dental Care, um, all the health care that you pay for children's hospitals, uh, the, the roads that you pay for on so that the baby, the child could get to and from medical appointments or to and from hockey or to... You already pay. To I have never... Kids. You've always paid to help raise other people's kids. I always. have never called the fire department. I've never had Sartex come to bail me out of a situation. I think I've called the police once in my life for someone else. Mm -hmm. And I pay for all of those things. And I'm happy to continue doing it because somebody else will need it. I'm not such a selfish prick. And if we had to pay for all of it individually for ourselves, if I had to pay for my own security force, yeah. and my own fire detail to be on standby 24-7, I wouldn't have any money. Exactly. That's why we share these costs. Well, so 
They turn around. It's like well, this, they want me to pay you. Do I can't believe they want me to pay to raise my raise your kids. It's like well, everybody paid to raise you. <laughs> pay it forward. <laughs> it's like so, you didn't make it to where you are in Canada alone. It's when we I all the, helped. When I hear the hypocrisy of somebody like Lauren Boebert, who I know is an American, and that's a different set of political arguments. But when she says something like, "When I was on a." I don't know, uh, food stamps. Nobody helped me. You were on food stamps. You dumb idiot. You foolish, ignorant hick. Who do you think paid for the food stamps? <laughs> I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. Thank goodness for the food program. Yep. Yep. We are raising geniuses. We are raising geniuses. I can't even. I yes. can't even. Yeah. So now this is a great initiative. It's absolutely fantastic. We fully support it. We don't understand why some people don't. Uh, you're going to have some conservatives that are going to be in an interesting position to say some really interesting things that I hope that the liberal comms team will be sitting by a computer and clipping and then well, putting into ads. Kind of like the whole Daniel Smith thing. I get more money back from the carbon tax than I pay into it. And now I'm going to protest against it because Stephen Harper told me to. I mean, that's what I figure it's got to be. I figure it's all part of Harper's game plan. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think Pierre Polyev is smart enough to come up with that one. Mm -hmm. I'm never, I've never questioned Harper's intelligence. Never. He's a very smart man. He's an evil prick, but he's also a very smart man. Yeah. So the National Food Program is going to con create more consistency across the country because right now we have a patchwork and Minister Christian Freeland says that she wants this in place for the coming school year. So this is going to require agreements with the provinces and territories. Some of them are going to want to drag their heels on that. But again, um, this is um, very, very good for the federal government because as we keep on saying on this show, our premiers are the problem. And a lot of yes. colonists are starting to point it out now uh, recently. So hopefully this becomes a drumbeat, and right now we're going to have a situation where the federal government is one going to want to institute a national food program for this September, yes. and you're going to have federal, we're going to have provincial conservative governments probably trying to impede that over the course of the entire summer. So now you have your summer campaigning issue for the barbecue circuit now, don't you? So this is a very, very, very good move here. And uh, the other thing that I find interesting about what the liberals are doing with this type of uh, pre-budget announcement is that they're doing it this year mm -hmm. instead of next year's budget and this is the year to announce these types of programs because you still have a full extra year and some so it looks like you're working on stuff that you've got new ideas that your government is tired and that you're you know you're moving forward on things and building stuff for the country and you have a full year and a half to start doing stuff to start showing some results. If you do these types of things, I'm going to announce a national school food program in the April of the election year. Then it just sort of looks a little cynical yeah. to people. So if I'm doing doing these uh, spending items more than a year before the next year election, and a half easily right? gives it, it gives it time for that 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 media narrative not to hold to show that you're serious about it. So exactly. I'm glad that they're doing it one year uh, earlier. Now. Um, the other thing that they absolutely need to do in this budget, though, however, is found fund that Canada Disability Benefit Program because mm -hmm. they keep on announcing it and they keep on consulting and whatnot, but they haven't actually put the money in yet. And they probably should do that this budget too, if they're talking about uh, feeding kids. Because you know what, disabled people have children too. Yes, and they're not feeding them on the little pittance that they're getting. That's for sure. So yes, this is a good move. Uh, there's uh, absolutely nothing about this program that is going to make conservatives look good because if they do that thing, that knee-jerk thing, well, liberals proposed it, so I need to oppose it. Uh, you're basically opposing feeding children. And you're basically as well sitting there and you're thinking, you know, um, me as a Canadian, I'm sitting there and go, heck, I'm already paying for the education. What's a couple of million more to make sure it actually sticks? And yeah, it works. It uh, you know does its thing. Because you know if you're educating children who were hungry and therefore not at 
the maximum ability to learn, you might as well light the money on fire. Well, and I don't know if you saw the quote from the prime minister. As an educator, as a teacher, I can tell you that children do not learn well on an empty stomach. We're going to remedy that. I'm like, oh boy, that was well, exactly good, that was this is the one where he can, where he can speak as a teacher. Yes, because yeah. unlike the leader of the official opposition, or the, the the loyal opposition leader, the LOL, unlike him, the prime minister has actually worked and lived in the real world. Yes, yes. he had a privileged upbringing. Yes, he has a big uh, golden parachute that will be gifted to him from his father's estate and of course as prime minister he will have a very large and healthy index pension all of this is acceptable and normal for somebody in that position he also worked as a snowboard instructor as and a bouncer, bouncer as an actor as an actor and as a teacher real jobs interacting with real people and remember what he taught primarily mathematics he did one semester of drama, but the conservatives always have to say the former drama teacher, one semester, one, one. Yes. He was a math teacher. He also taught literature, if memory serves. Yep. Again, I'm not his biggest fan, but stop painting the man with the brush that he was merely a drama teacher as if they, and, and this is the thing, they shit on teachers. Hey, Vim, tell us, how do you feel about that? How do your brethren feel about that? Because educators uh, is what creates the next generation. They educate, they, they nurture, they, they teach, they inform. Without educators, without teachers, we're fucked. There yeah. will be no experts without these folks. So yeah. when the conservatives shit on him for being a, a drama teacher, you know what? Go fuck yourselves. Go yep. fuck yourselves. Yeah. Go, Mr. Mr. Gal, my drama teachers probably taught me how to navigate people. Yes. <laughs> I had a good drama teacher too. Um, so basically, uh, right now in Canada, about one in four kids don't eat enough food. Yeah, one in four. One in four. So a school breakfast and lunch program, there should be both as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Because is going to make sure, and uh, this is what the quote to the Prime Minister, 400,000 more kids across the country who will have fuller bellies in class who will be able to go to school and know that they can focus on reading and learning and playing, and not on the grumblings in their bellies. And uh, as kids from low-income families or kids who belong to racialized and indigenous communities are most likely to be food insecure, the program will be designed to find ways to provide meals in culturally appropriate ways as well. Annie Kidder from the People for Education, a public school research and advocacy group, said, quote, money we spend on education, on childcare, on food for children, because it helps them to be able to learn, to be able to grow up, to be contributing citizens. It's an investment. Yes. Kids who are well-fed do better in school studies, find. And uh, Jagmeet Singh is quoted here as saying, we are the only G7 nation in the world that doesn't have a national food program in schools. Now, Prime Minister Trudeau promised the program in the last election, and uh, you will see Singh all over social media and all over the television and all that kind of stuff saying, you know, he did that, he's pressuring it. No, 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 the, that, this one is a lie. The National School Food Program wasn't even in the Supply and Confidence Agreement. No. Nope. This is a promise that the Prime Minister made himself during the last previous election and is moving forward. So what Mr. Singh here is doing is he's taking something that he knew was going to happen anyway, and about mm -hmm. two weeks before it was going to happen, start talking about it in the media, like he was making it his personal issue that he was going to force the government to do or push the government to do that. And now that it's happening, he's trying to claim the credit. He's got absolutely nothing to do with this other than the vote he's going to cast in the House of Commons. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to vote for it. Other than that, nothing. Nothing. This is He didn't even fight for it in the Supply and Conference Agreement. He's just, just strictly trying to take credit for it because this is clearly an NDP-style initiative. Except it wasn't his. It wasn't, it wasn't his. his. But it wasn't his. So he can stay there like for two weeks before, you know, saying like, we really need to do this. It's like Christopher Freeland, they've already announced that it's going to be at the budget. So you're not doing, you're not forcing anybody to do anything. You're just saying, me too, I agree. But he's going to try and frame it like it's something he's pushed for. Yeah. We've always supported this and we've been pushing the liberals for years to do this. No, no. 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 
the Prime Minister has full credit on this one. It might be something that have been an NDP policy for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, but that's not what he brought to the supply and confidence table, just like he didn't bring electoral reform or... Right, a lot of people on the NDP side are upset with him. He says, "Well, you, you gave him a supply and conference agreement. You didn't even fight for proportional representation." It's like that—that's the deal you made, buddy. Well, and the proportional representation that doesn't work in the favor of a lot of people. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into that debate. It's just no, no, it's not a debate. I'm just it, you know, you know, but I—I I don't want to go on the tangent on yeah. proportional representation versus single transferable vote versus first past the post and all that kind yeah. of stuff. It's just that we'll be here forever. This is an issue that's important to that side of the political spectrum, right. and he didn't put it in the deal. Yeah. yeah. So, and he did not put this in the deal either. So, anything that's in the deal, he can take some credit for pushing or twisting an arm like this, and not for the fact that he did it all himself but for pushing or putting it on the agenda or getting some movement on it. Legitimately, he can say he did that. On this one, he can't. He can just say he voted for it <laughs> and supports it. So this is a big a big deal. A big deal. This, uh, we will need this, and hopefully uh, it, will get, uh, it will get done for September in all provinces, and if it doesn't, uh, the provinces where it doesn't get done, hopefully that premier will be very much shamed. You you feel shame and uh, let's see if I can find that. Where'd the thing go? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I'm so tired right now. That's all right. That's all right. Um, so that's the big news that have come in. It's the National Food Program. And like we mentioned, there's there's some stuff, some stuff for renters and stuff for expanding childcare that uh, have been announced as well. And uh, hopefully maybe on another show we'll be able to present some of those elements. But I wouldn't be surprised uh, if there's more coming because it seems today, according to the people from my politics, that uh, today the, uh, the, the budgetary announcements will be on things related to, uh, to housing. That, uh, yeah, the team will be all over the country yeah. talking about stuff like that. So we'll find out what's on the schedule and what uh, the government uh, has planned in its budget on housing today. But uh, I'm thinking uh, strategically, this is a good move. This is a way to get, because people have been wondering for the last couple of while now, how to get the most out of the budget, because it seems to be a one-day story, and then people just move on. And Governments are usually terrible at communicating what it is that they are actually doing for people. So this is something, an initiative that's good. I mean, the budget's not before, again, the 15th or the 16th or something like that? I'm not sure. I'd have to check. The 16th. So... Yeah, if it's a Tuesday. So there's still two more weeks. So they literally could have an announcement every day for the next two weeks. Right to the budget. So that but but that's that that's important because it's two weeks that the liberals are driving the narrative. Yeah, they can make hay, yeah. Well, As opposed to Pierre Polyev. Here's a here's a good one. This is from uh, my name's not Gordy, Barney Panofsky's best intentions. Mm -hmm. What are the chances those arguing against funding school food pro school food programs are the same folks who think we should be investing in more police and prisons? Mm. I mean, <laughs> mm. that's uh, what we call on the nose. <laughs> Damn, that is a oof, oof. ouch! <laughs> Somebody went for the juggler there. Yeah, the Venn diagram for that is a circle. <laughs> yes. My God. <laughs> well, wow. And, and, about, yeah, no, no. But since talk about going right, right, right for it. But well, it, you're right. And, and and look, here's I'm gonna I'm gonna put a cartoon on the screen. It's a little it's a little uh, diagram, and it's going to explain it to you. Really simple. Conservatives, stop sending billions to Ukraine so we can take care of our own. Canadian child, I'm starving. Conservative, fuck off. Pretty much. Right? Well, th well, that's their shtick, right? Is that they keep on, you know, saying, like, we got to take care to, of our own. We got to take care of our own. And then when you says, okay, well, here's how we could take care of our own. It's like, that's, that a, that's a bloated bureaucracy. You're <laughs> just wasting our money. I do not know. That money would be better spent on giving a tax cut to a billionaire. Yes, that's exactly the To create thought. one job. Didn't Doug Ford go on about God bless the Weston family? Oh, God, did he really? Uh, oh, yeah, he did. 
look here, you can bless whoever you want. You're free to do that. But the, the Weston family, the billionaires who are gouging the shit out of us right now for mm -hmm. the price of food, you know, the one thing that without we will die. You need two things, food and water. Shelter is especially important in a, in a country like Canada. But without food and without water, you will die. You can survive for a, quite a long time with water alone, but eventually you will die. Without food, you will die. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? Gouging the living hell out of us because they know we can't survive without their product. <sighs> There's a special place in hell for these folks. If you believe in hell... Not everybody does, and if you do or you don't, doesn't make any difference to me. But there's a special place for folks like that, and I certainly don't want to go there. I would agree with you full-heartedly on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting thing happened the other day, kids and cubs. Um, you may have seen... You may or may not have seen these pictures. I don't know how much press it got. It got a little bit of attention. But um, Pierre Polyev went to Manitoba to have a meeting with uh, Wab Canoe. Mm -hmm. Like this. And of course, Wab was gracious and hosted him. Yes, and then uh, the leader of I opposition put out a statement saying, Today, Mr. Polyev met with the Premier of Manitoba, Wab Canoe. Mr. Polyev and Premier Canoe discussed the federal carbon tax hike on April 1st, with Mr. Polyev highlighting his calls for the federal government to pause the 23% increase. They also discussed funding for infrastructure and economic development in the province and underlined their shared priorities in these areas. Mr. Polyev thanked Premier Canoe for standing up for Manitobas by pausing the provincial gas tax during this historic cost of living crisis and for calling on the federal government to remove the federal backstop for Manitoba. Mr. Polyev and Premier Canoe also agreed on the importance of rural development and road building. They agreed to continue working together to ensure that vital infrastructure projects for the people of Manitoba receive appropriate support funding from the federal government. Wow, Podiev was really, really happy he had this meeting, and I'd like to bring your attention here to the fourth paragraph in that statement. Mr. Podiev thanked Premier Canoe for standing up for Manitobas by pausing the provincial gas tax during the historic cost of living crisis and calling on the federal government to remove the federal backstop from Manitoba. Now, I don't know if you noticed what Pierre did there, because the second paragraph is, right? Mr. Polyev and Premier Canoe discussed the federal carbon tax hike on April 1st with Mr. Polyev highlighting his calls for the federal government to pause the 23% increase. So basically, because Mr. Canoe was on record as saying that he had some apprehensions about the carbon pricing, well, PDP stains peddled his little feet as fast as he could to Manitoba to get a picture with Bob Canoe saying, hey, I even got the NDP leader of Manitoba agreeing with me on carbon stuff. Even he doesn't like it, so Trudeau must be really bad. Mm -hmm. Problem is, yes, he paused the provincial gas tax during the historic cost of living crisis. Doug Ford is still pausing it. Mm -hmm. Danielle Smith has decided she doesn't need to pause it anymore. Yeah, she brought it back in yesterday. Yes. Danielle Smith, despite the fact that she's running a 300 and something million dollar surplus has taken money that she could have given to help people with affordability and gas prices or not to not raise the provincial gas tax, but instead put it in the Heritage Shavers Trust and then decided for some reason, because the price of oil didn't meet what the budget predicted, mm -hmm. where she's not, you know, where she should be on the royalties, that she can't forego that four cents on the gas tax this time around. She absolutely needs it. But it's the carbon tax that gives you a big rebate, by the way, that she yeah. said in her own words. Yeah. Her gas tax doesn't give you a rebate. The carbon tax does, but it's the carbon tax that's going to get you. The carbon tax that's 3.3 .3 cents a liter, but her gas tax increases four. Yeah. So she could have made any types of decisions. So she's clearly not interested in her herself helping the citizens of Alberta with any type of affordability or the price of gas. She just wants everybody else to do the lift, heavy lifting for her. And then she can claim she got them to do it. And ain't I wonderful and I great. But here, Pierre Polyev went to Wab Canoe and said, you know what, hey, you have apprehensions about the carbon tax. I'm going to take that and I'm going to make that mine thing. I'm going to say that you know, we're working together. So when he says here, thanked Premier Canoe for calling on the federal government to remove the federal backstop for Manitoba, but as we reported yesterday, Premier Canoe is asking the federal government, he's not asking the federal government, hey, federal government, remove the backstop for Manitoba. And I'm going to do nothing. 
Yeah. Like all the other conservative premiers are saying, he's saying, remove the federal backstop because I've got a program to propose to you that equi- that's equivalent or superior. Yeah, no, there's nothing. No. Which was the original design to begin with. The federal government designed the program saying, hey, provinces, if you want to go first to do your own thing, so long as it matches these criteria, we're good with that. And then provinces said, no, we don't want to. Because doing something concrete to fight carbon is going to hurt us with our base. And so the federal government said, well, fine, you don't want to do anything. Something's going to happen anyway. All your so here you got along to us. Yes. So here you got the premier of Manitoba saying, hey, Federal government, you issued us a challenge. I'm going to take you up on that. And you got Pierre Poliev going to Manitoba saying, hey, look at that. The premier of Manitoba is asking, thinks just like me, thinks we should remove the carbon backstop. Uh, No, he doesn't think like you because the premier of Manitoba is going to do something to actually reduce carbon. He's going to start, either either he's going to do a a cap and trade program or a whole bunch of technological initiatives or something like that, or he's going to put in place, put in place a provincial carbon price like BC does or something, but he's going to do something that is going to factor in the price. Your position, Pierre, is that we shouldn't do anything to factor in the price. Every time the reformers, every time the reform party tells us that uh, they do not trust experts for expertise. I hope that the average Canadian hears that and goes, they ain't getting my vote. They ain't getting my vote. And I know a lot of people are like, look, I'm tired of Trudeau. Fine, I get it. But do you seriously want to put a man in power who does not trust expertise, who denies experts because it flies in the face of the personal narrative that he's formed? My narrative, my personal narrative gets destroyed all the time by expertise. It's because I'm an adult who wants to learn and grow. Even at 55, I still want to learn and grow. And I learn new things daily. And I learn them from experts because they trained in their field to be experts in their field. Hmm. When the LOL, the loyal opposition leader, says to you, I don't trust experts. I trust the common man. I'm a common man. Guess what? I trust experts. Hello. So basically, the play here is for Podiev to go to Manitoba and say, hey, canoe's on my team. And then a day and a half later, canoe came out and said, hey, Prime Minister, I'm actually on yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to see Pierre Poliev wanting to get a photo with Mr. Canoe very anytime soon. Not after this one. Mm. He got played. Oh, I got, I got, I got something for you here. Uh, and, and this falls in line with uh, Pierre Paul Live. Paul Live there. Um, you remember, ladies, if, if this man ascends to the position of prime minister, if, he, if his party was to win and he was to become the prime minister... He will have you um, barefoot in the kitchen and pregnant because his, he believes a woman's place is in the kitchen, whereas we believe a woman's place is in the resistance. Or anywhere, anywhere damn well she wants to stand. That too. <laughs> that too. Seriously. Uh, yeah, I have no problem. I have no problem with women want to take up space. I'm quite happy with please it. Do. Please, please do. <laughs> please do. Please. Um, now, in this other little thing that happened uh, on uh, March 30th, it seems Denise, Senator Denise Batters may have done something that will uh, get her in trouble with her party. Because it seems that conservatives have uh, finally come around to noticing or admitting that Ukraine has had a carbon tax all along. Yeah. But notice there's a switch in the narrative now. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You hear the doggy flap? Yeah, I hear the doggy. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm going to put this on the screen, sir. Yes. There we Please, go. Please go ahead and read it, Mr. Oh, from Denise Batters. 
Yes, Senator Denise Batters. No wonder the Trudeau government didn't tell the uh, tell Parliament the truth about Ukraine's tiny carbon tax before we voted on the awful carbon tax amendment to the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. Ukraine's carbon tax is a tiny $1.11 per ton, and Trudeau's carbon tax will be $80 on Monday. The Trudeau government finally gave Senate this answer one full month after we asked and nine days after our Senate vote. It couldn't be more obvious that the Trudeau government forced this um, contentious carbon tax amendment into the existing Canada-Ukraine free trade agreement negotiated by the Harper Conservative government solely to play domestic wedge politics. Shameful. Okay. Now, speaking of playing domestic wedge politics, we reported on the show months ago that it was a dollar eleven per ton. Yeah, this was no secret. This was no secret. You didn't have to wait a full month. You could have just looked it up yourself. I guess, or watched and then, the show because we reported it. Yes, but here we go. It's like before she says, "No wonder the Trudeau government didn't tell Parliament the truth about Ukraine tiny." Like this, the Liberal government has been saying from the beginning. Says Ukraine already has a carbon tax. Yeah. That's never been denied. It's not, not a mystery. There was like, it's like, oh yeah, but you withheld it, that it was so tiny. So now the comment, the, the complaint is, is like, okay, yeah, yes, yeah, okay, fi- finally, we'll, we'll admit and we'll acknowledge, finally, mm. that Ukraine has had a carbon tax all along. Because, but oh my God, it's just a dollar eleven. Oh, I can't believe blah, 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 this. You're lying to us. It's like, yeah. And then there's the whole component about the fact that Ukraine wants to join the EU and the EU has a carbon it. tax. And, and I'm guessing it. that, the, yes, and I'm guessing that the EU's carbon tax is more than a dollar eleven. Mm-hmm. So what these... Um, I think Switzerland's 180. Yeah. So, but, so what we have right here is that now that they finally admitted this, it's probably going to take another five years for them to acknowledge that the EU also has a carbon price. And that Ukraine must match it, match it to join it. So I don't know what it is about these IDU conservatives, but it seems that they don't want Ukraine to join EU. Mm. I wonder why that is. Well, it seems oh. that Putin doesn't want Ukraine to join EU as well. There we go. There it is right there. Right there. There it is. That's what it is. And given that Canada already has a free trade deal with the European Union, Yes. Gee, it sure would be inconvenient for the conservatives if the Ukraine had a free trade agreement both with the EU as a member and with Canada. Mm. So that all of us would have agreements with each other. Sometimes I wonder if Canada should join the damn EU. It was like well, we're not part of Europe, I understand. No, that. but we, but we border like, a European country though. Yes. We now do. Exactly. Kitlin and them. I wish we could join the EU like this. I mean, hey, Israel competes in Eurovision. So does Australia. Well, no, so, no, I mean, don't, don't forget, we there's a that island. Yeah, yeah. St. Pierre Miquelon and the, the no, little no, Danish no, island. No, the Danish island. That's the yes, one I'm talking yes, about. We actually Danish share. Hans island. island. Yes. 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 So, I mean, but I mean, there's a lot of these organizations that sometimes have like, you know, mm-hmm. ex officio members or members oh, yeah, that yeah. are not particularly like us. And it's like, just sign us up, man. Let us join. Just freaking you. join the EU. <laughs> Jeez. We're already a part of the USMCA. <laughs> <laughs> USMCA. But yes, it seems that the conservatives are now ready to acknowledge that Ukraine has had carbon tax. So congratulations. We'll be waiting for you when you're willing to admit now that the European Union has one as well and that the Ukraine much matched it in order to join. We won't hold our breath while we wait, though, for you to... Yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ, man. Um, yeah. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do we have uh, a show? We do indeed, sir. All right. Indeed. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you enjoyed listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. 
It helps us out a lot. If you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, well, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Curl. If you scan that QR code that has just appeared right below my goatee right here, that will take you to our pod page site. And if you are listening, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, we will come directly to you. And if you would like to support us in other ways, then you need to make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. And there you can play with our buttons. Like, share, subscribe. Click them, lick them. We don't care what you do. So long as you let show us some love by making those buttons sing. And uh, thank you. It really helps us out a lot. And if you would like to help us out in other ways, that QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head here brings you to the True North Eager Beaver Emergency Hydration Fund here at the Beaver Lodge. It's our coffee page where you can make a little donation if you like the quality of our show, you like the product that we produce, if you like us, if you feel sorry for us, whatever. We need your help. So we want to keep on producing this product for you. So if you can uh, drop a couple of loonies or toonies into our hydration fund tip jar, we would be very grateful for that. So if you scan that QR code, it will bring you there. And if you are listening, you go to coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. We thank you so much. All your help is really, really appreciated. Because democracy is something that you do, please write those letters. Very important. Um, write your MPs and your MPPs. Uh, no, sorry, not your MPPs on this one, just your MPs, and let them know that you are really, really, really happy that there is a school food program coming, that you very, very, very much support it. And if your MP happens to be conservative, really write them and say, um, you know what, you better vote for this or else you lose mine. Now, I, I honestly, um, in my experience growing up, I until I went to high school, until I went to high school, I had never encountered a child who uh, did not have or went without food. Um, well, that's not actually true. No, most of my life I was, I went to, uh, my elementary school on, on base. Mm. Except for when I lived in Canada, Newfoundland, I went to Catholic school, which was off base, uh, because the base there did not have, it was the way the housing was broken up it was right in the town. It was not separated from the town. Uh, but, but to that, um, that was the very first time I encountered somebody who, who didn't, who would went, who would ever gone without a meal. And I think about it, there was, there was a couple of kids who, uh, were very much impoverished. Uh, and I had to think about that for a sec, but yeah, there were a couple of kids that were impoverished during that uh, three year period where I lived in Gander, Newfoundland in the seventies mm. who, who did go without food several days, not just mm. once. And every now and then I would see teachers give them food sort of discreetly Yep, because they knew what was going on. Yep. For, for me, if it wasn't for the fact that my mom was willing to go without, I probably would have been one of the kids that went to school without food a couple of days a month. Yeah. Yep. Instead, my mom took the hit. My mom did a lot of things to make sure I didn't know I was poor. Let's put it that way. Oh, I've no doubt. Yeah. God, she was an amazing woman. Um, <laughs> geez. Um, so, yes. Uh, Please, if you can uh, donate, we would appreciate that. Uh, write your MPs. Again, as we mentioned, let them know that you support a school uh, food program, especially if your MP is conservative. From the Beaver Lodge, uh, this is your Iggy Ripper saying, it could be a tough world out there. Please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And uh, oh, if you have a Lola to pet or give some nose kisses to, oh, what a lovely girl. <laughs> Mr. Nose, by the way. Yes. Do I you have some? See your heart nose. Yes. Do you have some words of wisdom for us today? Get some rest. You're going to need it. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, get some mental health rest as well as physical rest because we've got a long uphill battle to fight against evil minions who would starve children because they don't want to pay for it. There you go. Okay, Mr. Grizzly, roll the credits and I'll have a little bit of it. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster 
hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right. Uh, just a little uh, thing. If you're interested in the Men's uh, World Curling Championships, Canada will be playing New Zealand this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, they suffered their first loss yesterday because they played uh, number one team in the world, Italy. It was mm. a very, very, very close match, uh, but uh, and it went into an extra end, but they lost by one. But uh, they're still uh, doing well in the standings. The top six move off to the playoffs. Canada is currently in about third place at the moment. Uh, with that one loss. So, uh, so far, things are still good. Can you go back for a second and tell me who the number one team in the world is? Italy. Yeah. Yeah, that was after the Olympics in, uh, in, in Tofi- uh, not Tofino, D- Torino. Torino. The Torino Olympics, because uh, curling is very similar to sports that a lot of Italians play, so like bocce, bocce. and stuff like that. Yeah. So they took to it right away. It was a huge hit in that Olympic right away. And mm-hmm. Italy is now, uh, they have one of the best men and women's team. I think the women's team finished fourth at the World yeah, Championship. Yeah, they're a powerhouse for world curling now. So, yeah, yeah, now they are. It's no so. longer a lock that Canada is going to win the gold medal. It isn't. Mm-mm. It hasn't been for quite some time, but I think people fully realize that now. Who's the number one team in the world? Italy. Italy. There you go. Um, All right. Just want to put this link in the chat to uh, Mademoiselle Fox's uh, YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, Thursday evening, 7 p.m., she will be doing her uh, fun uh, fun and feminist conversations uh, chat. It's going to start, uh, we, 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 had a, we had a dry run, if you will, on Saturday. Uh, but uh, starting this Thursday and every Thursday thereafter at 7 p.m., the um, Mademoiselle Fox's uh, fun and feminist conversations. And she will have special guests. Yeah, come in. No. Kit Linda. Right now. Oh, you, you spoiled it for me. I didn't know that the match had originally started at 3 a.m., so the 10 a.m. match then is a repeat. But you told me what the result was. <laughs> oh, you spoiled that. I, I would love it if you would join, if you feel like it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. Yeah, I'd love to join. Well, are you talking about like this week, though? Thursday at 7. This Thursday. No, no, I'm, I'm on stage. Oh, you, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, another time. And yes. uh, with a crown, please. Oh, okay. All right. If you wish. All right. <laughs> okay, love you. Have crown. We'll podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids and cubs. Have a beaverific day. I'll see you.